and welcome to everybody who's joining us, whether you're doing so live at the moment or catching up later on as today goes on. Um, I think Mass may have wanted to say that the um, Zoom call is being recorded. So perhaps if you don't want to be seen, you might want to turn off your video. Otherwise, it's good that we're here today, um, almost at the end of our novena to St. Jude, but always trusting in his presence to us. I'd like to begin with um, the prayer, which comes from the collect, the opening prayer of the Mass of uh, the feast day. So let us pray. O oh God, who by the blessed apostles have brought us to acknowledge your name, graciously grant through the intercession of St. Simon and Jude that the Church may constantly grow by the increase of peoples who believe in you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. One of the things I always find a little bit strange about these Zoom calls is when everybody is told to mute themselves and then you don't get any response when people say amen, however loudly or not they may say it. But it's just the nature of uh, where we are in our world today. And we know that whatever difficulties we're going through, whatever issues we may be facing, we are not alone. We have the blessing of technology that enables us to gather like this we equally have the guidance of God's Holy Spirit with us. And that's something I wanted to focus on a little today. Taking something from the reading that I'm going to do in a moment from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, which reminds us that all of us are called to be part of the kingdom of God, called to build up that kingdom by the way we live, the way we witness to God's presence in our world today. And so the... Reading comes from second chapter of Ephesians, verses 19 to 22. You are no longer aliens or foreign visitors. You are citizens like all the saints and part of God's household. You are part of a building that has the apostles and prophets for its foundations and Christ Jesus himself for its main cornerstone. As every structure is aligned on him, all grow into one holy temple in the Lord. And you too, in him, are being built into a house where God lives in the spirit. Let's just focus for a moment on that little phrase. You are a part of God's household. It's an amazing um, phrase, I think. Part of God's household. All are welcome, as the hymn goes. I was talking to the outgoing vicar of... Heslington Church a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about our opening service of welcome for students and staff and chaplaincy welcome in the university. And we were saying we'd like to have that hymn, All Are Welcome. And he said, that's our anthem for this church. That's always been their mission, that all are welcome. He says that it comes from the dedication of their church. Church is dedicated to St. Paul. And because of that, they focus a lot on the writings of St. Paul, and in particular, on how he welcomed everybody. Whoever wanted to hear the word of God, he would preach to them. Jan, the outgoing vicar, said that they have come up with that as their regular hymn, that all are welcome in their church, just as all are welcome into the kingdom of God. When Paul is writing to the Ephesians then, he goes on and says that we are part of the building, that has the apostles and prophets for its foundations. So we have a strong foundation. The apostles, those who were called by Jesus and sent out by him to proclaim the good news. But building too on the prophets of the Hebrew scriptures, those who kept calling the people, turn back to God. Remember that God is with you. Remember what it is God is asking of you. And finally he says, Jesus Christ himself is the main cornerstone. Jesus, as he puts it himself, the stone rejected by the builders. But at the same time, it becomes the cornerstone of the building, that on which all else is based. So we too 
Paul writes to the Ephesians, are being built into a house where God lives. God is with us. So we're building on that tradition, the tradition that the apostles and the prophets laid down. Jude, as we know, was one of the 12 apostles, one who was sent by God and by Jesus into the world to proclaim the good news. It's interesting, at the start of the Acts of the Apostles, when they want to replace the other Jude, Judas Iscariot, who had betrayed Jesus, they said, we need somebody who has been with us from the beginning, from the baptism of Jesus, all the way through to his death, resurrection and ascension. And I think that's what we're called to as well today, to be witnesses like this, to the life, the ministry, the death, resurrection of Jesus. And perhaps even more, be a witness to his presence in our world today. The fact that he is with us in all that we do, Jesus is there. His ascension didn't mean he was leaving us. It meant he was going into a new way of being with us. He was no longer limited in time or space, but he's present to us throughout. Poor old St. Jude doesn't get an awful lot in the scriptures. He has one line in the gospel when he asks Jesus a rather strange question. It's during the Last Supper conversations that Jesus is having with his disciples in John's gospel. Jude simply asks, Lord, what has happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Why was Jesus only revealing himself to a few and not to all? And in response, Jesus tells him that all people will come to know Jesus if they keep his word and receive his spirit. But Jude, like all of the other disciples, perhaps other than John, the beloved disciple, was very human. He deserted Jesus at the crucifixion. And yet, after this disastrous event, he was in the upper room in order to receive the Holy Spirit when Jesus appeared to them. He received that Holy Spirit that Jesus breathed on his apostles and sent them out into the world, sent them out to proclaim the good news. Our tradition is that Jude then became a missionary. We're not quite sure where, there's various traditions saying where he went and indeed who he went with. And one of those traditions is that he was martyred along with Simon, Simon who was called the Zealous in order to differentiate himself from Simon Peter. So Jude encourages us in his writings and the letter that's attributed to him. Verse 20, he says, build yourself up in your most holy faith. That's our calling today, our calling as disciples of Jesus, as a Christian people, through prayer, through reading of the scriptures, through discussions of faith, and most of all, through our celebration of the sacraments, we build ourselves up in our most holy faith, the faith that comes from knowing God, the faith that enables us to be witnesses, somebody who not only has seen Jesus, has encountered Jesus in our life, but shares that news with others. A witness is somebody who shares what they have seen. We are called to be missionaries in that sense, just as our church is missionary today. We celebrated last Sunday, not yesterday, the week before, World Mission Sunday. And we were reminded that the church by its very nation is missionary. We too, as people of the church, as the people who make up the church are called to be missionary in what we do. In other words, witness to Jesus Christ, share that good news, bring it into the lives of others. I suppose some of the things I like about Jude is that however little is spoken of him, he never really hit the headlines in the gospels or anywhere else. Even when he wasn't well known, he was perhaps like any of us, simply somebody who had encountered Jesus and allowed that encounter to change his life. Somebody whose faith was weak, but he didn't give up. Even when times were tough, when the message he was proclaiming really wasn't welcome, he kept going. He was somebody who believed in the resurrection. 
he had been with Jesus enough to know that even the very worst that could happen, the death of Jesus, wasn't going to be the last. That God was still with us. That God was with him. And because of this, because of his faith, because of his fidelity to God, because of his love for Jesus, he received the Holy Spirit and he remained part of the community of disciples. He was there to receive that Holy Spirit, which encouraged him or gave him the courage to go out and to proclaim the gospel. He encouraged others to believe our calling today, that our faith isn't simply something private, something for us to keep us comfortable, but something to challenge us and invite us to go into the world and proclaim the good news. Perhaps too, it reminds us of our need to be part of a community of believers, that we're not alone on this journey, that there are many others who believe with us, who live life with us, people whom we encounter each day who are in need of the good news. We're coming through eight, nine months of COVID and all the restrictions that's bringing to us, all the uncertainties that it's causing us. We're not quite sure even where it's going to end. All we can do is believe, like St. Jude, that God is with us, that however difficult things may be, God will conquer all. So St. Jude invites us to share the good news, the good news perhaps of Christ's resurrection, the good news that the very worst that could happen wasn't going to be the end, that God raised Jesus from the dead, that God is with us, to raise us from the darkness of despair into the light of faith and of hope. I'm going to ask Matt now to share the Novena prayer so that we can all join in it. Thank you, Matt. Pleasure. And so we pray. Jesus, I praise you and bless you and give you thanks for all the graces and privileges you have bestowed upon your chosen apostle, St. Jude. Take a moment of quiet now to bring to God our prayer. Almighty God, you reveal to St. Jude your desire to come to us, share your life with us. By your spirit, open our hearts so that we may come to know your truth. By keeping your commandments, may we know your abiding presence. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, pray, pray for you. us. St. Jude Hervius, Apostle and Martyr, Pray for Praise us. Jesus. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Mary, the mother of Jesus, shows us what it means to be a faithful disciple, a faithful witness to Christ. And so we ask her intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And as always, we give glory and praise to God as we pray. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May God, who founded the church upon the apostles, bless you through the prayers of St. Jude. Amen.
May God inspire you to follow the example of the apostles and give witness to the truth before all people. Amen. Amen. The teaching of the apostles has strengthened your faith. May their prayers lead you to your true and eternal home. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, those you know and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.